Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about systematic and random error, their differences, and I'm certainly also going to be talking about uncertainty, if that makes sense. All right, systematic and random error. You're a first-year chemistry student. You go into the lab, you do an experiment. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be right on the target. There's going to be some error. And there's two types of error that could happen. Your goal is to reduce both of them as much as possible. First one is systematic error. Systematic error uh, a lot of times is looking at your uh, design, your experimental design. You may be looking at um, enthalpy, for example, and be using a metal cup. In that metal cup, you're going to be losing a lot of heat. So that's going to have an effect on your results and it's going to have a similar effect no matter how many times you do that experiment so it's going to have you just offset of the bullseye target you're trying to get to that would be a systematic error it could be the equipment you're using or the technique that you're using isn't the best to get you closest to the target so it consistently gets you to the same spot which isn't right on the target. That's systematic error. Your goal is to design experiments that minimize that systematic error. Random error, on the other hand, is looking more at your lab technique. Being a first-year chemistry student, it's probably still in the process of developing. So you're going to have a higher random error. For random error, an example of random error would be mistakes done in the experiment. So maybe you're using a stopwatch and you're timing it um, and your thumb just uh, was a second too slow in pressing the start button. That would be a random error. Um, what people like to say for an example of random error is I calculated wrong. Don't use that as an example. Um, calculations aren't in your data collection. So when you're looking at errors, you're looking at errors in your data collection. When looking at the difference between random and systematic errors, there's a really good diagram to look at. Move it right here. We've got systematic error is very consistent, however it's not on the target. Whereas random error is just exactly what it is. It's random. You've got different data points all over the place. All right, next we have uncertainty. When looking at measurements, there is no such thing of a perfect measurement. Every measurement has some degree of uncertainty, whether it be the human eye measuring or a machine like a balance, there's going to be some bit of uncertainty. There's two types. There's human uncertainty and then there's machine uncertainty. For uh, human uncertainty, it's always half of the last decimal. All right, so doing an example, let's say we have 2.50 centimeters looking at a ruler. That would mean our uncertainty is plus or minus 0 0.05. Our last decimal is the second decimal, so it's plus or minus half of the last decimal. So that means our number could be either 2.55 or it could be 2.45. So that is the range of possibility that our number could be. There's an uncertainty, realm of uncertainty. Do another example, let's say for Superman, and we can measure to 2.500. Zero, zero is humanly impossible but Superman is more than human and that's centimeters this is going to be plus or minus half the last decimal being the third decimal 0 0.005 and that is human uncertainty all right now you may have the question how can I possibly measure the two decimals using a ruler so why don't we go over this real quick we've got a line right there and I've got a ruler right here I'm gonna put them together so I can measure it and we're gonna zoom up on this guy and what we got going on 
is I can definitely tell that this is one centimeter and that's two that's my whole number so that's no problem we want to start right there and I can certainly tell that there is 2.56 there's definitely six it's not quite seven but then once I get between the six and the seven now there's a degree of uncertainty I'm not totally sure I'm gonna to have to estimate that so looking at it I'm gonna say around 2.68 and this last decimal is uncertain so it could be plus or minus 0.05 all right so essentially what I'm saying is that could be 2.63 or it could be 2.73. It could be a number, any number between those two numbers. That's my range. That's my uncertainty. All right, last but not least, we're going to be going over machine uncertainty. So this is something like a balance. We got machine, and let's say it's like the ones in the classroom, and they go to two decimals. And we measure 52.31 grams the uncertainty is always going to be one tenth of the last decimal whereas human uncertainty was one half of the last decimal all right so that means i'm going to have point zero one because that's one tenth of the last decimal being the second decimal what do we have in an analytical balance that's found in the project room and we measure fifty two point thirty one zero two our uncertainty is going to be plus or minus the last decimal, one tenth of it. Zero, zero. We got one, two, three, four zeros. One, two, not four zeros, four places. Zero, one. And that is my uncertainty of a machine.